Hi, this is Charity, and welcome to my Sims 4 channel, where, I'll, where I will be doing a challenge that I created called the Ghost Town Ca Challenge. And the reason why I decided to do this is I am a bit of a hard driver for my Sims. I always want to max out all their skills and make all the money and always work hard. So I don't find it very much of the Sims to be a challenge because it seems like there's so many easy ways to make money and there's so many easy ways to avoid anything bad happening. So this challenge is meant to be really difficult. And it's also trying to focus more on character development because traits will determine what a sim has to do and whether or not they can earn money and how they can earn money. And also, I like to involve all of the elements of the gameplay for the sims. So if something is possible in the sims, then I consider it uh, possible in, in this challenge. So for example, ghosts are real. Anytime a sim dies, they are attached to their tombstone or their urn and they can be summoned or they can be released to the netherworld and forever forgotten. Another thing is that money is never a challenge for me. Even if I start out with zero dollars and start some sort of legacy challenge, it seems like after one or two generations, money is pretty easy. And then after three generations, you really don't have any problem with it at all and you're basically rich for the rest of the game and I don't really like uh, starting out with absolutely nothing because you have to be able to buy your skill building items and your money making items you know if you're a painter you need to buy an easel uh, you need to be able to pay for the hundred dollars to start a painting so I don't like starting off with absolutely zero because that forces you to do things like collect harvestables and sell harvestables and collect items and, and do things that may not be realistic for your sim. So money making will be restricted to uh, child aspirations or skills that a particular sim has or by traits not by actual skills by doing anything you want because not anyone can make a painting and sell it that's just unrealistic so i plan on using a, a debt system but just because i decide not to be homeless and i take out a debt that's going to affect how much time i need to spend on making money because unfortunately every dollar that you take out in debt means you have to repay two dollars or simoleons in this case. So taking out debt is actually a bad thing but it can help you jumpstart a, a sim who can only make money through painting because you at least need to buy the, the supplies in order to get started. So this is a legacy story, and I'm going to be covering a story from birth to death, including the founder. So the founder has parents, but she doesn't know them. And there, there's going to be an explanation for why that happened. But right now, uh, she's in an orphanage, and this orphanage has been established by Bella Goth because she's an intelligence researcher and she, f she found through her research and through her job that some children were left without parents and they were actually in danger because of their parents' jobs or their, or their parents' actions. So she established this place for children to go and be protected. And unfortunately that means none of the children will ever be adopted but they will live here in this orphanage and get taken care of and protected until they reach teenager. Now, whenever the child reaches a teenager age, either they stay in the orphanage and replace one of the adults if one of the if if a job is open for because I have two employees for the orphanage. Uh, but if there's no jobs open, then they need to move out. 
and the founder, once she reaches teenage, she will be moving out regardless of whether or not there's a job opening. And there probably won't be anyway because everyone's older than her because all of them are toddlers right now except for the founder. So it, it'll be highly unlikely that all of this, all of the toddlers pass away before uh, she, she reaches teenage year. So once she reaches teenager, she's going to move out and start the new legacy. And this is the building that I created. It's pretty basic, uh, basic square building with a very boring roof because I'm not that talented when it comes to making roofs. Uh, but I wanted to make a very large building that was able to house all of the toddlers that I chose to make part of this challenge. Now I did use a mod in order to increase the number of Sims in my house. So the game may run a little bit slow at times when I'm doing this, and I may need to babysit some of the autonomous actions, but hopefully it will go smooth enough that our founder will be able to reach toddlerhood and then and then pretty much a smooth sailing after that because you can actually control the founder. Uh, I can't control any of the other Sims unless the game is glitching. So I'll have rules for these challenges uh, posted in the description below if anybody's interested in recreating the challenge for themselves. Uh, it's a very long uh, list of rules, I will warn you, uh, but it's also not for the faint of heart. This is going to be a very uh, restrictive challenge, uh, probably a little bit more than you're used to even with normal legacy challenges. But I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So let's give a tour, because right now, since I can't control anybody, uh, the baby is a founder. And I can just wait. I have to unfortunately wait on normal speed because if I speed this up, <laughs> the autonomy uh, glitches even more often, and I don't have a lot of opportunity to correct it. So I will be running this for at least two days of sim time in order to get the founder up to a toddler. All right, so here in the first room, we have the toddler's play area. They have a dollhouse, some stuffed animals, because those are very important for raising attention. Uh, unfortunately, there's a current bug with the game that allows caregivers to walk away once they start a toddler on an activity, such as potty training and uh, playing dolls or reading a book. They won't even read them a book. I mean, even if I direct a caregiver directly to read a toddler a book, it just cancels the action and it doesn't even work. So if toddlers are talking to each other or talking to other siblings or talking to strangers or even people they know, they don't gain any attention, which is their replacement for social need. And that to me doesn't make any sense, but unfortunately that's just the way they, that it is. It only raises their attention if they're talking to a caregiver or sometimes if they're receiving a bath from a non-caregiver, it will work. But if they're playing or just talking to a normal caregiver, I mean to a normal adult that's not a caregiver, it will not give them any attention which makes them very sad all the time. So this this is eventually is going to be all red <laughs> with lots of unhappy toddlers. But that's just what we'll have to deal with. Now, this is the sitting area. Uh, there's just some books here and some little decorations. Here is the servants' quarters. There we have, there's the butler's bed. And the butler has a private entrance to a shared bathroom. Uh, she shares a bathroom with the uh, secondary employee of the orphanage. And then there's the headmistress of the orphanage, Lori Parrott. She sleeps in this room. 
and there's the founder. Uh, I have this door locked so none of the children can get in there. Hopefully it won't glitch and allow kids in there, <laughs> especially when they become ch actual children instead of toddlers. They tend to talk to the baby. Uh, but actually I don't have any children right now, so that shouldn't be a problem. And here is the cafeteria area. I actually have high chairs just in case I forget to set the food out uh, because that is basically the only way they can get fed if there's no food sitting out. Even though they're a little bit annoying, I'm going to try and make this with the toddlers, uh, with the high chairs for the toddlers. And here we have the toddler bathroom with some bathtubs and little froggy mats I thought were cute. And they have a bunch of potties. And then this is where they would keep all the toddler diapers and changes of clothes. It's out in the hallway because toddlers actually need help getting changed or changing their diaper or getting a bath. So all of that is out in the hallway. And then back here, we have all the toddler bedrooms and the toddler room, or toddler beds in the toddler room. I have probably not enough beds for all of them to sleep at the same time, but it's enough that they don't get upset about it. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, twelve, twelve beds, and there are currently 15 toddlers. There will be 16 when the founder ages up, but there are 15 right now. So there's only three toddlers that won't be able to sleep at the same time. And hopefully that's okay. I tried this before with maybe uh, eight beds and that did not work at all because basically they're always crying and waking everybody up. So no one could ever sleep and it just was not a good experience. So here's the play area. I've got a swing set, ball pit, slide, and then the dumpster outside. Uh, these gates on the stairs are, are nice. Uh, they have to actually have a fence that extends them and then a gate in order to lock them properly. And what that does is it prevents the toddlers from going downstairs because downstairs we have the laundry machines and some equipment, electrical equipment maybe, and water filters, a hot water heater. It's actually just random stuff I chose from the game to make it look like a basement with a whole bunch of utilities stuff in it. There's also some files down here. Uh, that's going to be where all the files and information on the children are kept. And I found that I can actually have the laundry day stuff installed as long as I put two washers and two dryers for all of the clothes that come in. And that is actually uh, manageable by the employees because I hire a maid and I hire a butler. And then there's two household employees. And... These poor household employees, they never manage to sleep. So unfortunately, that's just how it goes. They're constantly checking on children, even if the child doesn't need anything or, uh, or they, you know, they need to go to the bathroom or they need to sleep. They'll still go check on the children instead. So it's a little bit frustrating at times that they're always tired. But as long as there's two of them, and a butler, and a nanny, and a maid, I find that it's all manageable, even though it's a little bit crazy. Because I just have to relax and say, okay, these toddlers are going to be unhappy. There's nothing I can do about it, and that's okay. So as long as you're okay with that, this actually runs pretty smoothly. So I don't know why people will complain that toddlers are hard to take care of. Uh, they're hard to keep happy. That's true. But as far as getting them taken away, it takes a lot. I mean, because, see, he's hungry, but I know for a fact that 
even after this gets into the dark red, it takes another 17 hours of some time. And see, he's already going to go eat. It takes another 17 hours of some time for him to get taken away. And that's just, you know, not going to happen. And why did that get canceled? Well, I didn't cancel it. Let's see. Maybe he'll go eat anyway. Um, so then there's the upstairs. Yeah, he's going to go eat anyway. And then he's going to throw a tantrum. Sometimes the, the game will go back and forth between throwing a tantrum, then going to eat food, throwing a tantrum, going to eat food. So it's a little bit chaotic at times. But like I said, there's no way that in 17 hours he's not even going to make it all the way to eating. Oh, and I got to move this. I forgot because I locked, I locked the upstairs for now since there's no children. So this should go down here until, until we have children. Otherwise that laundry will never get collected. And yeah, that's just not good. Okay. So for the, for the upstairs, eventually when the toddlers age up, this is where all the children beds are going to be. Okay, and these are not on. There's not an all light. Ugh. <laughs> I want to turn on all lights and it's not going to let me. That doesn't make any sense. I've never had that problem before. Okay. I have a lot of candles, but... Alright, well, anyway, I'm going to have to turn on these lights for when the children are up here, because unfortunately they get that monster under the bed thing, and then they go wake up all the adults, and the only way I have found to get rid of this is to use this little light and put a bunch of them because on both sides of the bed they have to be there and they have to be on and it's just so annoying but that's just how it is because otherwise they will go and, and if there's a monster under one bed every single child will wake up and go get an adult and say Oh, there's a monster in the bed and now I can't go back to sleep. So to avoid that, I've just put on these lights and hopefully we won't have to deal with it because I had them around the room, like where these candles are, and that was not enough. They were not close enough to the beds. And then I thought, well, the monster never comes for double beds. Let me replace all these single beds with doubles. Um, that doesn't work, unfortunately, for this household because none of the children are related and they will not sleep in the same bed if they're not related. So I have to have everyone has single beds and probably this light in the middle is not necessary because I think if the two beds are next to each other, the monster can't come out because there's something next to one side of the bed. But just in case I put lights everywhere and that will fix the problem. But anyway, the children have little dressers for their personal belongings and maybe some clothing, but they also have lockers in the shower room, which they share lockers, but uh, that can also hold clothes or towels. And then they have bathrooms. There's four bathrooms, each with the, the toilet separated from the shower because then eight people can use the bathroom at the same time instead of just four. And it doesn't take very long to use the toilet, but it takes a long time to take a shower. So if you're tying up a toilet because someone's in the room taking a shower, I find that very inefficient, especially for a large or orphanage like this. So. That's why everything is separate. All right, and that concludes the tour. Now, 
Did my nanny leave? Probably. That's one thing about nannies is you have to keep calling them back. Whereas with butlers, that's not necessary. All right, well, at least some of them are going to bed, but they won't stay asleep long. All right, well, as far as the employees go, this is Lori Parrott. She's the headmistress, headmistress of the orphanage. And she wanted a big family. That's her aspiration. She wants to be a super parent. But unfortunately, she's also unflirty and neat, even though she's family oriented. So she could never make a relationship work and she became an elder. So she's no longer able to have children. The best thing that she could do is work for this orphanage and adopt all of the children as her own, basically. And she she likes to treat the children as as her own, even though she's a little strict. She cares deeply about all of the kids. And the other employee, which is <laughs> about to fall asleep, Elianya Cantu. She is a painter, but she wasn't able to make her dream of earning money as a painter work. So she has this job at the orphanage to get by and pay the bills. And all of the toddlers are basically different names, random names, random appearances. But I started out with random traits for this challenge. And then I decided that was too much because unfortunately with The Sims 4, the adults will never autonomously train the kids to use the potty. So they will always be using their diaper and always have low hygiene. <laughs> and sometimes even if they're independent, they have low hygiene. But at least they have a chance of staying clean if they're, yeah, see this guy's at least clean. If they're independent, they can go use the potty. And you don't have to worry about them not being potty trained. So they're all independent, even though uh, they still require the adults to put them to bed most of the time. And I find that also pretty annoying because, come on, you're independent. You should be able to go to bed. <laughs> but they always ask the adult to put them to bed. And then they cry and wake all the toddlers up. So the toddlers are never rested. Uh, but that's okay. We'll work around that. As long as they're fed, it doesn't matter that they're not rested and that they have no attention and they have low hygiene, that they have low fun. The only thing that matters is that they get fed. Which... You know, social services will come and take your kids if you don't feed them, but they won't take them for any other reason. And that is also a little unrealistic, but we're going to we're going to fly with that because it is difficult for them to keep any other of the needs even remotely high. So I'm just going to accept it. And sometimes they get stuck. Which one are you? Craig Beck. Why are you stuck? And... Oh, well, that wasn't. Alright. Well, he got unstuck while I was trying to reset him. Okay, why are you crying? All you have to do is pick up the food. <laughs> there's food over here there's food over there but no he just keeps having a tantrum there it is okay I also find that when they put things back okay that one's spoiled 
that I have to make sure that that it's not a bugged piece of food because sometimes the food will get bugged and if the food is bugged they will try to eat it but they can't eat it so they will continuously pick it up put it down pick it up put it down and you know toddlers they have to walk away to the farthest place on the map in order to go eat their food so sometimes the high chair is better because it actually prevents that I know a lot of people who do the 100 baby challenge and they don't like high chairs, but it really depends. Sometimes, because they're sitting in the high chair and they have to immediately eat the food and they can't move, that is quicker than having them go and pick something up and then go halfway across the house to eat it. And then when they go to put it down, go halfway across the house to go put it down. <laughs> So, yeah, a lot of glitches in this game with autonomy. And you can't even control that, even if they're not autonomous. Where they eat and where they set things down when they're done with them for dirty dishes. You can't even control that. Okay, and the nanny is hopefully going to go take care of the baby. And how much time do we have on this? Okay, tomorrow. Today is Monday... Oh, at 8.52, so it's really early. But I kind of need this to play out in um, regular speed mode. I tried this on a speed run, and it, 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 it glitched too much, and it was constantly having the baby's needs get too low, and I was having to step in and make one of the adults do something, which I'm trying really hard not to do. Uh... But the, the adults would basically be stuck, not doing anything. And if I didn't give them an action, they would continuously be bothered by toddlers, but not actually take care of any of the toddlers. Because it, it would be too slow between the toddler asking for something and the adult actually carrying out the action before they got interrupted by another toddler. And... When I Also, when I first started this out, I had half children and half toddlers. That did not work out very well either. Because, unfortunately, the children are constantly asking for advice. And when that happens, that interaction freezes the adult where they are. They can't pee. They can't go to, the, they can't, uh, go to sleep. They can't eat. They have to wait for the child to walk from wherever they are to the adult ask the question and get an answer and when you have eight children trying to do that to two adults constantly it was just so annoying and disruptive and then occasionally this door here would get unlocked and the kids would walk in and block the baby from being taken care of by the adult and that happens randomly when a child leaves the lot and comes back so whenever they go to school, and sometimes when I would save, that door would somehow get unlocked for one of the children. And so I decided, no children. I'm going to go with all toddlers. Ooh, and Foodies Unite might, might get the uh, NAP. That's the one I actually want. But I'm allowed to go and have you vote. So I'm going to see how much it's in the lead. Because I want to make sure that that one gets selected. Because I don't want any stupid NAPs. <laughs> Some, like the bags. I can't stand that one. Or rough housing. That one is also not good. Okay, so Foodies Unite. Oh, they're ba barely in the lead. Six? Well. Let me make it nine or ten. Nine. Okay, that's all I can do for now. And then I'll check it again later to make sure that that one wins, if I remember. <laughs> yeah, and see, she's waiting on the toddler, and she's going to talk to him. <laughs> and he's going to go tell her to go away. Okay, that makes absolutely no sense. Why do you walk halfway across the house to tell someone to go away? <laughs> Yeah, I guess that's a little bit um, 
realistic of toddlers. They don't make any sense sometimes. Did that even... No, that didn't even get his attention need up, even though he talked to a caregiver. <laughs> Yeah, no matter how uh, difficult these toddlers are in game, they are nowhere near as difficult as real toddlers. <laughs> Some people think, oh, it, it, it's being realistic. No, no it's not. If you can click on a toddler and click go to bed and the toddler goes to bed, that's not realistic. But I guess if you're not controlling them, they're slightly more realistic, but it's still, you know, if an adult carries them to, the, to a bed, as long as nothing wakes them up, like loud music or another kid crying, they will go to sleep. And most of the time, they stay asleep. Occasionally, they will wake up because of nightmares, but not nearly as often as they wake up in real life, through my experience. So, another thing about having the children, when I had children and toddlers, was that I had traits for the children, and I picked random traits. One of them had the Recycle Disciple trait, and I couldn't figure out why my trash cans were disappearing, and I think a coffee maker disappeared. And I found out it's because the children sim cannot take care of their need to recycle. Even if they rummage for bits and pieces and dumpster dive, they still can't take care of all of their recycling needs. So that makes them swipe a random object, but for some reason it seemed to mostly target trash cans. And recycle that object for bits and pieces. And I could not have that happening because I didn't even know what object was swiped because the notification would come like way after the event and I didn't even know what I needed to replace until all of a sudden I can't throw things away because that needs a trash can. And that was kind of annoying. So yeah, I, I decided no random traits for any of the autonomous children. And also I have to double check my butler and make sure my butler and and sometimes even I didn't check the maid or the nanny because they're not here all the time. But I did check the butler because one time I got a butler with that trait. And he recycled my dumpster. <laughs> I saw him do it. It was just ridiculous. Okay, almost Fiona's birthday. That means Tuesday at about 12.50, it should be her birthday. Usually, usually it's a 24-hour notice. And you're bugged. Yeah. Oh, no, you're not. Okay. Sometimes the adults will get so tired and so interrupted by toddlers that they won't even pass out. They'll just keep doing things with the pass out in zero minutes and never actually pass out. So I'm trying to prevent that because it's not realistic. Oh, you're passed out in a high chair. You're not hungry. You're hungry. Eh. See, 18 hours. He will sleep all the way and wake up before he needs to eat. And... Yes, Nanny, go take care of the baby, please. 13 hours. Just seeing how many of them are low on hunger. I might need to set out some more food. All of this food was either cooked by the nanny previously or it came from the buffet table. So I fully stock the, the buffet table. And then I set out one item at a time so that it's not wasted. Uh, that's part of the challenge rules that you're actually allowed to set food out uh, using a buffet table, but you can't ask someone to cook. There was a pasta primavera that was made by the nanny, and 
since there was already food out, I just put it in the refrigerator. And unfortunately, there is a refrigerator bug that makes the food not spoil once it's been in the refrigerator and you save or leave the lot and come back, which I find super annoying, but I'm just going to ignore that for now and say, well, I could just restock the buffet table if the, if the food was spoiled anyway, but yeah, I'm not going to worry about it. It's only a little bit of cheating because it's minimal. I have so many toddlers that another $250 is not going to make much difference when it comes to calculating my score. So I'm just going to ignore it. Also, I took the hard route for, for the starting uh, founder. I fully decorated this place, which I didn't have to do. And I gave lots of lots of activities and lots of items, which does two things. One, it drives the cost up. And two, it gives too many items for the autonomy to sort through sometimes. So this is a really difficult build, but I just, I built it before I decided how the challenge rules would be played out. And I just love the way this is. I know it's kind of funky and it has a lot of colors, but it's because it's for children that I really love it that way. So that's why I decided that I was just going to roll with it and have all of these, all of this decoration and so many items in here that it's going to make autonomy kind of, kind of crazy sometimes, but I think it still works and I can still get through it. So I'd rather have the nice looking stuff than you know, maybe one more point. <laughs> it's not going to be that many more points because you only get a point for every hundred thousand dollars. And so far I've spent a little bit over 300,000. And yeah, that's three points, but I, I doubt that I could have gotten it down to 100,000. Because you still need to have all of the necessities in order to care for all of these toddlers. And it actually will help my score, score by having so many of these toddlers that I think that will, the benefits will outweigh the negative. Alright, where is the nanny? Is there a nanny still here? I don't see her. I'm going to have to call her back. Yeah, because the butler's asleep. Whenever's the but Whenever the butler is asleep, I have to make sure that I call the nanny back after she leaves. I think it's just a dirty diaper, but just to be safe, I will call the nanny. Once these kids age up, I really don't even need a butler service or a nanny service, but I'll probably still keep the butler because the butler will fix objects. And that is super handy because autonomy very rarely fixes objects. And calling a repair technician every time something is broken is just kind of annoying. So I'd rather just have it taken care of. Okay, who is hungry? You're hungry, but you're going to go to bed. Okay. Because you're more tired than you are hungry. That's fine. You're hungry. There's food in here. Why? Well, two left. Eventually, they will all get to eat. That one is actually eating? Okay, why is your hunger not going up? Yeah, sometimes they the toddlers don't even reliably eat when they're in the high chair. They just sort of sometimes eat. Okay, there we go. <laughs> 
All right. And then the adults will come by and grab one of the food items that they could have grabbed from the refrigerator, but no. Okay, who's going to get the food first? <laughs> oh, sorry, you, you missed out. All right, I put out more food. There, there's more food. Yes, you need food. Go get it. I think she was about to head for this one, and then the other kid grabbed it first. Okay, there we go. Now she's going to get in a high chair. Um... Oh no, she's going to take this food from this kid that's not eating. <laughs> well, you're not hungry, so... Alright, come on. Come over here and grab this food. Sometimes the high chairs are more trouble than they're worth. Oh, I forgot to vote. Good thing the Foodies Unite won. Okay, finally. <laughs> that took forever, but still, she has 17 hours to eat. Okay. It got canceled because someone's probably about to put her in a high chair. <laughs> oh no, she's throwing a tantrum. <laughs> Go grab your food. Ah, she's going to get put in a high chair. Oh well. And she has a dirty diaper, but at least the butler's up now. Only about another 12 sim hours until Fiona ages up. And then at least I'll be able to do something with the toddler. We have to try and get her skills to 5, which is going to be difficult. Uh, because this obviously is not a tiny living house. So I think that that is what has spoiled me in making toddlers so easy, is that when you have the tiny living benefits installed, their skills just go up so fast. And it doesn't even matter that they're bugged and they can't ask adults to help them with things anymore. The tiny living skill boost just makes them learn so fast that getting them all to five is pretty easy. But getting them all to five without the tiny living benefits takes every bit of their time and you have to be pretty efficient too. You can't let them eat every time they're hungry. You can't let them sleep every time they're tired because then you will just go back and forth between eating, sleeping, and going to the potty and there's going to be hardly any skill building at all. So you basically have to ignore the hunger until it gets really bad, you know, very red. And sometimes it's even better to ignore their energy bar and not let them sleep because when they pass out, they gain energy back much more quickly than if you have them sleep in a bed because toddlers could only get uh, the three energy beds and they can't they, there's no bed for a toddler that is better than that and those beds are so super slow it only gives them one up arrow but when they pass out they get three up arrows which is like the highest quality bed <laughs> and to me that doesn't make very much sense because 
toddlers, when they pass out, they do not sleep better. They actually sleep worse. At least in real life. But that's not how the game works. Alright, well, there's still a lot of hungry toddlers, but I just have to make sure that this doesn't run out. There's two left, but I'm going to go ahead and put out another one. And this one's really hungry, but she's probably going to, yeah, she's going to pass out first and then maybe eat. <laughs> oh, she's eating right now. But she's going to pass out while she's eating. That's okay. As long as she gets a little bit of food, she won't be too bad off. Oh, she's not even... She hasn't even grabbed the food yet. So, yeah, the... The game is running a little bit behind. But I think it'll do okay. And the nanny, at least, is guarding the baby. <laughs> Alright, do the most important thing. Feed the baby. <laughs> I think the nannies and the butlers do a little bit better job of feeding the child and changing a diaper versus just cuddling. It seemed like with my other games that I've played that even if a parent was a caregiver and they were taking care of the baby, they chose to interact with it three times. Either rocking, cuddling, cooing, talking, you know, one of the social interactions three times. And then they would either give up or feed the baby. And then if they fed the baby and that still didn't work, they would change the baby's diaper. So it would take four or five interactions for a baby's diaper to get changed. And that was just ridiculous. Okay, now she's going to feed the baby. Okay. So that should take care of the baby, hopefully, until, uh, until she ages up. Because she should age up pretty soon. Well, 12 some hours, but it takes a long time for after you feed a baby for the baby's hunger to go low enough to get taken away. So I think we're in the clear. But still, I just don't want, I don't want any of the other toddlers to get taken away either. Oh, she's still crying. Why is she still crying? Oh, she may, she may have passed out when the nanny tried to feed her. Because that didn't seem like a very long feeding. And yes, babies can pass out too. Because they'll be crying and then all of a sudden stop crying and no one has done anything. And then when they wake up again, they immediately cry. Alright, so... There's a little bit of that. There's still plenty of food. In fact, there's too much food. Yeah, and this place is a complete, absolute mess. <laughs> Even though I have a nanny, a butler, and a maid. When the maid comes, they can't possibly get to all of this stuff. And they just leave, <laughs> which I find kind of hilarious, but uh, they spend a lot of time standing around, and there's a maximum amount that they will stay for. Uh, why are you just out here? Are you glitching again? Yes. Okay. Let's see if I can fix Miss Lori. I always forget which button it is. <laughs> I need a quick reset button. Okay. 
Actually, I think she won't even work with a reset because unfortunately her... Yeah, she, sh she should be passing out. Okay, well, let's try clean out spoiled food. I might have to tell her to go sleep because she's got the pass out bug where she's so far pa past passing out that the game will not check again to see if she needs to sleep and she'll just be permanently in that state and not be able to do anything unless I tell her to do something. Okay, go to sleep. If she goes to sleep and gets even a little bit of her energy bar back, then the game can check again and see if she needs to pass out and correctly handle it. And of course the baby's going to wake her up right away, but hopefully that should just get her enough to reset her needs. Yep. <laughs> Nope, it didn't even get her one little sleep. <laughs> well, if you take care of the baby... No, she's not going to. Okay, good. Then she passed out. That's good. Okay, so even though she didn't get any energy back by sleeping, it reset her and allowed her to pass out. All right, it's Tuesday. Now we just have to wait until about 12.30, a little bit after noon. Oh, why are you going to go look at that? <laughs> She's so tired and she has so many kids that need her and she, she decides to go look at the painting. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's why it's actually a little bit risky to have uh, decorative objects because a lot of times Sims will choose to go look at the object even if they have other things they could be doing and that they should be doing. But I guess it makes sense because she is an art lover and a creative and she's a little bit stressed out right now because of all these toddlers. Okay, you're going to go bug the butler for food. And that's another thing. Why are my butlers always elders? I mean, usually the nanny's an elder too, but this time I got lucky and I got an adult <laughs> instead of an elder. <laughs> because elders don't have as much energy and they walk around kind of... Uh, humped over and occasionally they, they have to stop and hold their back <laughs> like they can't do very much anymore so getting an elder that has to keep up with all these children is kind of unrealistic but okay now she well she was gonna go get the other one but I guess not <laughs> All right, what, what's wrong? What can't you get to? They keep complaining that they can't get to something. <laughs> well, I'm going to help you a little bit by cleaning up some of this food, and maybe you'll have less stuff to interact with. And you won't be so confused. And sometimes they'll leave plates and things like that out here. I have to watch that because anything that's left out here, uh, even if it looks like it's food, it isn't food and they can't eat it. They'll try to eat it and then it'll drop from their queue and then they'll go put it down again and just repeat that cycle. 
so I gotta I don't know why it sets food on top of the gate sure I have <clears throat> I have BB move objects on but I have to in, in order to place gates most of the time so yeah build object blues All right, everything's gone. You can go away now. Ah, oh, you put another one there. Okay, why can't I grab that? Probably because somebody is trying to come eat it. <laughs> okay, there we go. I threw away all the food that was out here. Making the kids come up here. At least I think I did. You're going to pass out soon again. You're fine. We turn your earbuds back on. Oh, that's another thing that you can do. You can buy earbuds for the adults because it's pretty much required in order to uh, keep their fun need up. Otherwise, they will get very, very unhappy. All right, you're eating. Maybe. All right, the nanny is about to go home, so I might have to call her back. Yeah, why don't you go eat before you go to bed? I have to watch it though because if he's targeting something like peas, he's either going to get put into a high chair, which probably not because yeah, he's going to pass out first. Probably not going to get into a high chair if he's walking because the adult will come and pick them up. So there has to be peas around here somewhere that he was planning on eating, but I don't see them. Oh, there it is. There's the high chair. Okay. <laughs> Why are you viewing the salt and pepper shakers? <laughs> okay. Well... Let's call the nanny back. <laughs> okay. Supposedly you're going to get food. Where are you that you need to go home? Oh, that's a bug that kind of annoys me sometimes. Even if they're not outside, it's still... Oh, well, he's going outside. <laughs> Maybe that's why it shows up. Yeah, one of the disadvantages of BB move objects is it occasionally makes it difficult to put things in trash cans. All right, go home. That's one of the actions I am allowed to do, is make a sim go home. But then he only goes <laughs> two more steps. Yeah, he won't go inside the gate or inside the house, which is kind of dumb. Go home. 
Yes, I am home. <laughs> okay, you're going to go get food. Here comes the nanny. It's funny how even invited sims have to knock on the door. Just come in. But they have to knock first. And then they wait, even though nobody's invited them. Well, they've got invited, but nobody's invited them since they knocked on the door. They will still come in. Okay. And there, she's happy, which means she can at least make it the seven hours, or five hours, yeah, five and a half hours about until her birthday. And then once, <laughs> Lori passed out. Once it's her birthday, then I'm going to take a break because this takes super long. What's funny is you can actually turn on their earbuds while they're sleeping, even though when they go to sleep, it resets them so that they don't have the earbuds on, but it doesn't prevent you from turning them on after they go to sleep. You can also turn them on while they're in the shower, which I guess if they're waterproof is okay. Waterproof and wireless, I don't know. Let's see, if we have nobody that needs any food, I might just suck it up and fast forward this. Wow, most of the toddlers have, have eaten. You're just hangry. That's, that's fine. You're fine. You have another 15 hours before you starve. Yeah, it's random about showing the timer on these two. Sometimes I can get it to show the timer and sometimes I won't. Um, I think it depends on the level. If it's like not super red, it won't show up. That's a little annoying. Because if it just says hang hangry, it doesn't show up. But that's how you know that they're fine, is that they're not ravenous. Yeah, whenever they get the ravenous buff, that's a bad thing. And this little poor little toddler passed out with all of his needs as, po as low as they can possibly go. <laughs> Except for maybe bladder. But he'll be fine. He'll wake up and there's only two left. Wow. Well, this probably means that he's going to get put in a high chair. Just eat the food. All right. <laughs> or take somebody else's food. <laughs> Roman. Do you need to eat, Roman? Yes, you do. Oh, that was... Well, no, you don't. Yeah, Roman already finished eating, which is actually a bad sign because when a toddler finishes and the food still looks like it's on the plate, sometimes it's not. So I might have to watch him and if he goes and puts that down, it means I need to throw it away. The game is so glitchy when it comes to eating food now. It's like spoiler timers are broken. Uh, finishing a plate of food sometimes doesn't register the fact that the food is finished. And your Sims will continuously try to eat it, but it doesn't have any food on the plate. Even though it looks like, yeah, and he put it down. So that's what happened. 
this plate of food is actually gone. And he will just continuously try to pick it up and eat it. Macy, where are you? Okay, you're still hungry, so most likely that food is still there. But if, if her hunger bar was full, then I would probably throw this away. Well, I'm going to throw it away just to be safe. Because Harry needs to actually go pick up some food that isn't. Oh. Oops. Oh, now I can't grab it. Someone else is getting it. Oh, Harry's getting it again. Well, he's a little stuck. Come on. All right. Oh, that's what you get for increasing the game capacity uh, beyond what the programmers wanted it to be. They also don't, uh, whenever EA makes houses, they have a limited number of objects in them. Like the starter houses and even some of the more expensive houses are really kind of barren compared to this place. All right, 11 a.m. Yeah, we're just going to fast forward this a little bit. <laughs> I can't fast forward it all the way past her age up point, though, because sometimes the game will uh, skip her age up. And I want to actually get the notification and not go past it. So I'm just going to fast forward it only a little bit and get rid of my notifications. Oh, look, he has two bars full now. <laughs> He's a little bit happier. Oh, we need some more food out here. Okay. I think it's my last thing of food. Fruitcake. <laughs> well, that doesn't spoil anyway, so why does... That's, oh, got distracted by a toddler, did not finish the mac and cheese. Oh, well. Twelve twenty-nine, almost there. Hopefully I get the notification and it doesn't glitch out. Okay, cool, I got it. Let's see, who is the least tired and the least busy? Well, the nanny needs to get out of the way. Get out of the way. Okay. And I probably should make it so that anyone can get in there now. Alright, and Fiona aged up. Alright, so for this challenge, uh, even though everything is random, I get to choose... I mean, everything is not random. Sorry. I get to choose the traits, but I have to use them all equally. So for her, I think I'm going to make her wild. 
uh, based on what I'm going to have her do later. So she's going to be a wild toddler. And the only thing that that really is a disadvantage to is she can't potty train herself. But I can ask the adults to potty train her because I can control her. So there she is, the, the first sim in the legacy, Fiona Westfall. And I'm going to stop it here and we'll pick up next time with her as a toddler. Thanks for watching.